Hi, and welcome to this week's Wu Wei Wisdom Life Lessons Teaching. It's great to be back with you all. This week, we are answering the question, is it possible to ever fully move on from past trauma or pain without forgiving those who wronged us? Or if you have made mistakes yourself in the past, do you need to forgive yourself in order to free yourself from regret, guilt, and shame? Well, in this teaching, you will learn that healing is possible without forgiveness and the steps that you need to take to achieve this. Okay, David, so what's your view on forgiveness? Well, this may surprise a lot of people, but I don't believe in forgiveness. I do not think forgiveness ever works for a couple of reasons and more kind of involved reasons, which we'll go into in this teaching. But the number one reason, forgiveness creates a hierarchical situation where you have to forgive someone else or they have to forgive you. And really, at the end of the day, we as human beings always are making mistakes. We always will make mistakes. So I always think, who am I to forgive someone else when I've probably done the same or equally or worse than they've done? And secondly, I don't think it ever works. To be honest, I've never found in my 45 years of working with clients, I don't think this concept of forgiveness ever works. Well, why do, why do you think it doesn't work? Because it, it, what it does, it doesn't resolve the issue. It, it puts the person in a kind of a superior mode. Well, I forgive you. And then it keeps the energy connected to that person and that situation. It's always like a kind of, a, um, what would you call it, a, re a recurring theme. So every time you think about that person or that situation, it plays back. It keeps you energetically connected. And I believe that the better way, the Wu Wei wisdom way, would be acceptance. I think that's a much better way to bring a resolution, a clear cut, accept what happened, learn any lessons that need to be learned, and that's what we'll be talking about here, and then you can move on. You're not dragging this memory along with you. Uh, there are so many things I want to pick you up on, on what you've just said there, David. You say the idea is there should not be a hierarchy of me forgiving you, you forgiving me, and the, the principle being the Taoist principle of oneness, that yes. we are all equal. Yes. We can act appropriately, inappropriately, but energetically we are all equal. No one should be higher or lower. And I suppose that is what undermines the, uh, the concept of forgiveness. However, typically when we are seeking to forgive somebody or wishing that they would forgive us, it's because there is a situation whereby there is a victim and a perpetrator. So therefore we are not equal. The dynamic is not equal. So how, how do you square that circle? Well, that's, that's if you see yourself as a victim mm. or, the, or as or the perpetrator. So mm. that's, that's a, a, de, a, de, a definition on whether you're defining that you're the victim or you've been victimized or you're the perpetrator. So if we're talking about something that they've done, something that they've said, something that they've promised to do and they didn't do, or they've gone against their promise, this is an action that they've done. And this is an action that we all do. We all are all capable of doing that type of thing in an energetic sense. So I think that if you put yourself superior or inferior, victim or perpetrator, what that does, it creates an unbalance in your energy and therefore doesn't help you to resolve the situation. The situation gets energetically stuck and it creates what I call the carousel of despair because although you verbally or say, and maybe at the time believe that I forgive you, I forgive you for lying to me, for betraying me, for not delivering what you've said you're going to deliver, for going behind my back, whatever it is, I forgive you. But I don't think that energetically 
you really do. You're really still connecting because you haven't resolved the issue. You're, and this happens a lot with my clients in their childhood. So they've had what they consider sometimes absolutely quite correctly, injustice, unfairness have happened to them. And then they fall into the trap that you just said. They see themselves as the victim. I, I just need to stop you, though, because a lot of people would say, well, I was the victim of abuse when I was younger. And I would disagree. I would say that if you have come through that, you are not the victim, you are victorious. Because you've encountered a situation, part of your life journey, and you have been able to come through that. That, to me, is absolutely amazing. You know, I often say, what would you, somebody wrote in and said, well, when I say in these videos, you would not say that to your child, would you? And they wrote in and said, that's what my parents did say to me. And I wrote back and said, wow, how amazing are you? How amazing are you to get through when your parents look you in the eye and say, you're not good enough? How amazing are you to get through that? I don't think that makes you a victim. I think that makes you amazing, absolutely awesome, victorious. But what you said, if you see yourself as a victim, and then that creates the filter for the rest of your life. You're always looking through that lens, and then you're stuck. And even if you say, well, I've forgiven my parents for that. Oh, oh, that was what they didn't realize what they were doing. But inside, yeah. that is not resolved. Would you say, I'm just trying to pick this apart just ever so slightly. Would you say that and I'm just going to pick picking the worst case scenario here because mm -hmm. I know you work with a lot of clients who have suffered extreme abuse of all different kinds in their childhood. Yeah. <clears throat> the moment, the time that they experienced the abuse, they were a victim of the abuse, yes. a victim of the action. Yes. But what is what you're saying is that does not then make them a lifelong victim yes. of that or a lifelong victim in in the round yes. and that in your experience working with clients that's what they do because if they if they yes we need to accept i was a victim of incredibly bad treatment yes. at that time it was wrong it was it shouldn't have happened yes but to carry that story that label of vi being the victim into our adulthood combined with the desire that I'm not going to let this go until I forgive, until I get into a position that I can forgive them, or I am now a victim for the rest of my life in every aspect of my life. That is, that is a, it's an unhealthy perspective. Is that, is that kind of what So let me saying? make it even clearer. Okay. So using your extreme example, abuse, sexual, physical, emotional abuse, that happened to you if you're listening and this happened to you. In that moment, in that time, in that period, you were a victim of that abuse. That does not make you a victim. You did not know how to deal with that abuse that was being inflicted on you by grown-ups who really, that's where the problem lies with the person that was doing it. The problem doesn't lie with you. And so in that incident, in that energetic, you were the victim. But that doesn't mean to say that you personally, who you are, the nature of who you are, is now a victim for the rest of your life. And if you hang on to this forgiveness or seeking forgiveness or looking to forgive them, what you do, you stay in that energetic circle you've kind of dived into this victimhood. And instead of saying, for that period, if it's a week, a month, a year, two years, five years, I was in a position where I was a victim. But that doesn't make me, as a spiritual being, as an awesome person, a victim for the rest of my life. And I would then go even one step further and you're quite right, Alex. I deal with people that's had such horrendous, I mean, I, even an old 
Long in the tooth man like me, I hear stories that I can't believe that one human being could inflict onto another one, in a, especially a child, yet they survived it. And just thinking about it makes me go cold. I don't know how they did it. I listen to their story and my, I have to close my mouth and my mouth drops open. How did you get through that? How did you survive that? How did you move through that situation to mature to be how you, who you are now? You cannot be a victim. You was a victim of that circumstance, but you're not a victim. And don't give yourself that label. And this is the problem when you fall into this victimhood. I'm the victim. I have to forgive them. It's very difficult for me to forgive them. This is what I hear from my clients. I've been trying all my life to forgive my parents. And I go, well, why do you want to forgive them? And they go, well, well you should forgive them. Well, why? I don't understand why you should forgive them. And they go, well, it's the way it should be. I said, well, who says that? We accept it happened. It actually happened. It was a chapter in your book. We'll never know why it happened. We can guess. It will be an emotional imbalance for the people who were the perpetrators. They were having emotional, maybe even mental problems. But it's certainly not you. You're not the victim. They're the problem, not you. And don't give yourself that label, and don't then spend the rest of your life trying ways to forgive, except it happened, except you got through it. Close that chapter, move on with your life, and here's the problem. Many people cannot close that chapter. They get on the carousel, and then they say, well, yes, well, I've kind of, I've got through that, but you haven't closed the chapter, and then you view yourself you view other friends and family and situations through that lens. You're still energetically connected. And it's very interesting, David, that you say that because most people will believe that if I can forgive, then I release myself of the chain and ball of this, this uh, historic situation. I think it's like if I can only forgive, then... I free myself. But actually, that freeing ourselves is a choice that we have at any point. And what you're any saying point. is, we don't need to forgive the person, but we do need to accept the situation as it, it happened. happened we can't, when, so I guess you're not saying, don't forgive and it'll still be all right. No. We have to replace the concept of forgiveness, which I think you're saying is a is a flawed one, with the concept of acceptance. Yes. And it, is it, I'm kind of getting the flavor that acceptance is more about accepting the situation, the action, what happened, rather than forgiveness is more about the person. It's more about making it personal. Yes. Is that right? That's right. And acceptance allows you to look at it through a different lens, Alex. It allows you rather than look at it, as you quite rightly said, through the victim lens, it allows you to move your perception and to look at not only as the perpetrators, which the example that you use would be parents or guardians or some family member that's perpetrating, uh, and you see yourself looking at it through the lens of this a victim, it allows you to move and look at the situation, what I believe, what I would call Wu Wei, from a different perception. And you can see this amazing child actually being uh, somehow traumatized or abused, and yet they still manage to get through it. How amazing is that? And why would you want to keep that energetic connection? This is one of the most important things I work with my clients on. They will come and they will tell me things that truly happened 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, 50 years ago, a lifetime ago. Yet the way they talk about it, it's as though it happened just this morning. And they will emotionally react, they will bring tears to their eyes, they will cry, they will sob, 
They find it difficult. They have to leave the camera to go and get a drink of water. It only happened yesterday. And they're talking about something for this lady that happened 35 years ago. Yet for her, it was still current. And that's because she hadn't resolved the situation. Because this is the hard teaching. We can't change the situation. It doesn't matter what we do. The situation can't be changed because it's in the past. For this lady, 35 years in the past. Yet for her, it was still on the carousel. And she could bring it up like flicking her fingers and it would be absolutely current. And then she would experience the emotions again. I didn't ask her this question, but I think you could answer this question. How many times have you gone through this abuse? I would almost say daily, certainly five times a week. She will recall this, she will go through it, and she's disempowered. And what I want you to do, and why I'm teaching you this model, is to empower you, is to put you into your flow, not to, let, not to be drawn back like a kind of a, a, a whirlwind, a quicksand, back into the old way of thinking. I want you to be able to change your thinking, to be able to choose to release that or choose to keep it. But at least it's your choice. And that's the difference in being a victim and looking to forgive them, forgive yourself, forgive somebody else, somebody else, and just accept that it happened, be amazed of how you dealt with it, see if you could have dealt with it better, see if you can deal with it better right now. How can you resolve it right now in your mind? And then guess what? It's in the rear view mirror, and you don't have to go through it again. It is a part of your life. We are not saying you forget it, but you don't have to relive it. You use the word empowering, and I'm kind of thinking a lot of people listening to this will say, the thought of just accepting what happened really does not feel empowering. It feels like a compromise. It feels like I'm saying that it was okay that it happened. No. I'm, I never word, use the word okay. I didn't mm. say it was right that it happened. I didn't say it should have happened. I didn't say who was wrong. I'm not placing blame. What I am saying is did happen. It actually happened. We have to accept that. Because if you don't accept that, instead of being empowered to make a choice of how you now want to deal with something that happened that was out of your control, Falling into this forgiveness, looking for recompense, looking for someone else to make it up to you, seeing yourself, we call it the medals of honor. Well, if it wasn't for my this, if it wasn't for that, then I'd be better now. I'd be happy now if it wasn't for what happened to me 35 years ago. I relive it every day. I can't have a good relationship. This is what this lady was talking about. I can't have a good relationship with a man. And when we did the golden thread process and we went down, it's because she doesn't trust men. Why doesn't she trust men? Because of her father. So 35 years ago, what happened, the incidents over, I think for her, two and a half years, is still current now. 35 years later, She's still happening right now because she hasn't resolved the situation. She's not empowered. She's still being sucked back into that same way of thinking. So normally a client will go to a therapist with that situation and say, I believe I, the only way I can resolve this is by forgiving my father. Yes. And what you're actually saying, no, is the only way you can resolve this is by accepting what happened. It's happened accepting it, it happened. happened right now what do you want to do about that hmm. see now you yeah. see what you see but, what happened but i tell you what comes to mind and this is definitely the inner child part of us it's definitely us as possibly as the child who suffered at the time that's now been locked in that is within us now as the adult you really get that kind of pushback from that inner child part of the mind saying, well, I can't accept because 
it wasn't fair. Nobody's apologized. Nobody realized how bad it was for me. And if I accept, it's like nothing ever happened. And something did happen, David. That's right. And you miss one important thing that they'll say. I want to make them pay. Yeah. Have you ever said this? I want to make them pay. But you see what that does? Keeps you locked mm. in the energy. Mm. Keeps you locked in the energy. Now you haven't got that choice. Because did you notice when I flipped the question, when, I, when you said, okay, accept it happened, then I did what we call the flip. What do you want to do about that? Mm. Now that empowers you. Yeah. Now you can choose. Now you could just say, well, David, I want to spend the rest of my life trying to make my father pay. And David, can I just interrupt you there? Something that's coming to my mind is it's almost like if, I, if I'm kind of sitting with the kind of gift of forgiveness to either say, I'll put myself in the role of this client. Shall I or shall I not forgive my father? It's almost like I'm owning that that potential of forgiving as if like it gives me a little bit of control in the situation that I didn't have control of then. You know, it's like I now I'm taking a little bit of power back because I believe I can either forgive him or not forgive him. And therefore I'm I'm a bit more empowered. But as you said, it's actually that's a complete illusion. I'm kidding myself because all that's doing is keeping me connected to that's, the situation. That's exactly. It's keeping me hooked in. Okay. It's keeping me waiting for him to do something, to apologize, to change, to say something, or for someone to acknowledge that how bad it was. All the while, I'm not budging. I'm not resolving this for You're myself. You're on the carousel now. You're waiting. So using your, your analogy, now you forgive him. I forgive you for what you did. You know the first thing that he's going to say? I didn't, it wasn't that bad. Mm. You misunderstand I was going through a rough, a rough time. You see, you're still in the circle. You're still going round. Because it's not satisfied my inner child's needs you're for acknowledgement, righting wrongs, apologies. Making people pay, getting your own back, making them realize the medals of honor. We've done several teachings on the medal of honor. And so when you move to acceptance and accept that it happened, accept that in that situation, they were the perpetrator, you were the victim. You're not now, but you were then. Now, what do you want to do about it? Now, you could say to me when you went, hmm, very important. What do you want to do about it? Now, you could have said, right, I am now going to dedicate my life. Listen to what I'm saying. I am now going to dedicate the rest of my life, my family, my future, on making him pay. Okay. Now you see what you've done. Mm -hmm. Now you've made a choice of what you want to spend. Instead of being in your flow, mm -hmm. living to your potential, reaching the goals that you want to reach. No, no. You've moved your point to say, my role in life is to make them pay, to make them realize, to get my own back, to right a wrong. Then what you're doing now, you're moving your law of attention, attraction, you're focusing yourself, you are now not free. Mm -hmm. You are still connected to that same energetic, and you are committing yourself to what we call the carousel of despair, going round and around. Acceptance of the situation now gives you the choice. How do you want to deal with that? How do you want to live the rest of your life? Who do you want to be in control? Do you want to wait till they apologize? And even if they did apologize, even if they fell to their knees and kissed your feet and said, I am so sorry, for what I did 35 years ago, what changes? Just think about that. If this is you that I'm talking to, if the perpetrator came crawling to your knees, kissed your feet and said, I am so sorry, I am so glad you've forgiven me, what changes? It only changes if you decide to let go. 
Mm. That's the only thing that changes. That's what empowers you. Whether you choose to be connected or whether you choose to let go and focus on your journey, that's your choice. Going back and looking for this forgiveness or getting forgiveness or if they just do something. So I hear a lot of my clients, if they just apologize, David, if they just apologize, then I'd forgive them. Then I can move on. Can you see what you're doing? You're still hooking yourself I, in, into them. You're giving them. them the power. Exactly. 100%. Exactly. Because I was just thinking, you know, as, as you quite rightly said, you'll never get the recompense, the strength of apology, the acknowledgement from them or external sources that your inner child fully wants and needs. It will never happen in that way. And even if you did, you're still, in order to carry on through that story, on the other side of forgiveness, you're still the victim. Absolutely. You're still the victim of what happened. You're and, still disempowered. And even more subtly, as I said, when we get into it, you see it gets very subtle. You still have to accept their apology. Mm. So it's still acceptance. And all we're doing is saying, we'll cut all that out yeah. and just accept it. Well, this is, yeah, because this is what I'm thinking. You know, if you can... You don't need anything off them yes. from anyone else yes. in order to reach, give yourself permission to let it go, to accept it happened, exactly. to move on. But we artificially create this, you know, well, it's right to have a grievance, but we can acknowledge that things were wrong, it shouldn't have happened, they, they misbehaved, you know, you were mistreated. We can have that kind of acknowledgement from within ourselves. I guess the adult parent part of us needs to give our inner child that acknowledgement in the fullest, wholest way possible and actually not wait for someone else to do it for us. No, it's, this is definitely, it's the part of the mind that we call the inner child. And as we always say that we've got so many teachings on this part of your mind. You may call it your ego. You may call it your emotional mind. You may call it whatever. I believe the best label is the inner child because as we're trying to explain, if you're unfortunate enough to have that incidence in your life, that dysfunctionality, and it can be on many levels. It doesn't have to be extreme, as Alex says, abuse. It can be just harsh treatment, being unloved, not being cared for, being abandoned. These are very serious things for a child who cannot understand what's happening. Now, if you spend your life being hooked into that energetic circle, it's very toxic and it keeps you, even though the mature part of you is getting on with your life, career, family, there's a very important part of your mind that I call the inner child that's kind of hooked into this story here. We can't change the story. It's happened. It's true. It happened. The dysfunctionality is true. And if you're waiting for someone else to do something that then allows you to do something, now you're still being the victim. You are still holding on. Somebody else has to knock the first domino before you'll knock your domino. And I want you to be in control. And that's why I think acceptance is the most powerful teaching that empowers you. And then it doesn't matter whether they apologize, don't apologize, don't accept it, reject it. It doesn't matter because you know what? You're in control of your life and you can let them I want to say waller in their own sewer, but you can move on. You don't have to be dragged down into their energy. And that's why it's an energetic teaching. It's a very important teaching. If you're waiting for someone, it's almost like, have you ever been in that position? You're waiting for a telephone call before you can do something. Don't wait for your life waiting for something before you get on with your life. Your life happens today. 
Get on with it today. Live in your power. Live to your fullness. Be in your flow. You are already awesome. And if you sit there and you don't believe me, look at what you went through as a child. If that's not awesome, then I don't know what is. I don't know what you expect. That was amazing what you went through. Don't keep on giving them your power. Draw a line in the sand. Jump over it. Now get on with your life because it revolves about your choices. Don't wait for someone else to tell you when you can make a choice. And so does that principle apply to uh, issues and situations that happen to us when we're adults as well? The same principle of making the choice of moving away from the concept of forgiveness to one of acceptance. It's, exact, it's exactly the same. Uh, I was working with a client, uh, an older lady, who um, got left a marriage uh, and she now believes that because she left the marriage, it caused some difficulty for her children. And 40 years later, she still doesn't forgive herself. So we're talking about self-forgiveness now. Same thing. And how waiting to somehow forgive ourselves for a mistake yep. that we make at a time, often through our best intentions, but sometimes through inauthentic intentions. But by holding on to that kind of judgment against ourselves well, and the concept of I must forgive myself, that keeps us stuck in the energy again. Well, the concept is, as I was saying to my client, you, I said, let me just get it clear, you do not forgive yourself. And she said, no, I don't forgive myself. Uh, well, why don't you forgive yourself? Because now I believe I made a mistake. So I said, so when you make a mistake, what should happen to you? And she said, I should be punished. Okay, well, how long should you be punished for? And she smiled. She said, well, it looks like the rest of my life. And this is where if you fall into this forgiveness trap, because... I was I was kind of surprised. I said, well, what part of you has to forgive? What part of you? Mm. It doesn't even make any sense to me as well. Uh, and then she runs all these scenarios. Well, if I'd have stayed in the marriage, the children would have been happier. They wouldn't have been traumatized. My ex-husband would have been happier. And I said, well, how do you know this? How, do you, how have you just made all this up? You've just created this story, we call it, complete story about how things would have gone so much better. It, don't even, it could have gone worse. It could have been even worse. How do you know that? Uh, and she said, well, I don't know that, but it could have happened. I said, yes, it could have happened. I call it utopia. You could have stayed in an unhappy relationship and things could have got better. Yes, but things could have got worse. And she said, well, they were getting worse. I said, well, okay, they could. Well, why are you choosing to believe that things could have gone better? And she said, but I need to be punished. I, I did. To, and it's like this idea about it's, even though she is a mature woman, it's this inner child part of their mind where, as we've said in all of our teachings of the inner child, that part of your mind sees things right, wrong, good, bad, Punished, not punished. Look, it's almost like we call it the emotional pendulum, the two extremes of the emotional pendulum. And this forgiveness idea falls into that. One side of you has to forgive another side of you. Think about it. If you're thinking about self-forgiveness, what part of you is hierarchically able to forgive another part of you? It's a nonsense. Mm. It doesn't even make sense. And if... if I mean, you, what you've talked about there is asking the client a question of her version of how things may have been if she hadn't have acted in the way and that she's punishing herself on based on the worst case scenario outcome. But for some people, it is a fact that past decisions, choices, actions have hurt other people. Yes. It's a fact. It's a fact. So... But you're saying that actually we still just need to accept that it cannot be undone, 
and it's about our expectations of ourselves and that we are fallible and that we, I guess the key is that we will not make the same mistake again. Well, that then brings us back to why we do these videos. The only resolution, as you said, let's do what you said, worst case scenario. It's a fact. You've made a decision. On, on, on retrospect, it was the wrong decision. On retrospect, you see that you hurt other people. You now own up and say, I made a very bad misjudgment mistake in that place. You can't go back, here's the fact of reality. You can't go back and change it, it's done. So the question for you now is, what do I now do? How do I resolve this situation for me, for them? So if you've hurt someone, you may need to apologize, write a letter, try and explain, try, try and just explain the situation. For some people that's helpful, for some people it's not. But the most important thing and why we do these videos is what do you learn? What is the life lesson for you to learn from that energy of that situation? Because more importantly, if you do not learn that life lesson, guess what's going to happen? Well, don't even guess, I'll tell you what's going to happen. You will repeat it again and again and again. So for me, accept it happened changes your perception. See what you can do. If you can, need to apologize, make some financial recompensation, whatever you can do. If you can't do that, then the only thing you can do is learn your lesson. I call it swallow the pill. You have to swallow the pill. I know the pill tastes terrible and it's bitter and we do not like owning up to mistakes. Our inner child is very proud. It wants to be right. The inner child part of your mind hates being wrong. And it will fight against the idea of being wrong. It will fight even more about admitting it was wrong. But you know, sometimes in spirituality, being humble, admitting, learning your lesson, taking the medicine, swallowing the pill, and then moving on and making sure you don't repeat it. And that really is why we do these life lessons, to change the perception. We all make mistakes. You have, I have, Alec, we all do, because we're human beings and we only learn by making mistakes. The way that we have to do it is to learn that mistake as quickly as I can so we do not repeat the mistake. And so hanging on for some other thing to happen before you learn the lesson just keeps you tied in. And like my lovely lady, she's now given herself what is even worse than a prison sentence, a punishment sentence. Think about that word. She said to me, I need to be punished for the rest of my life. I don't even think she made a mistake when she told me about the situation. But even if she did make a mistake, you really need to be punished the rest of your life. I'm sorry, that's not being in your way. That's not living to your potential. And that's not giving those around you and yourself the absolute joy of being around you and sharing in your energy and giving them a great example of how you get through difficult situations. And that's the difference of acceptance, moving your perception, being in control, not waiting for somebody else to do something before you do something, learning your life lessons, accepting that we make mistakes, be humble when you do make a mistake, swallow the pill, learn the lesson and move on in your flow to reach your potential. Thank you, David. Well, I hope you have gained some insight and comfort from this teaching. Please do let us know what you think and maybe share the teaching with someone else who you think may also benefit. David works every week one-to-one -one with clients all over the world by Zoom video call. If you'd like to learn more about David's consultations, I will put a link in the show notes below. 
And finally, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We produce new teachings every week and we would love to share your journey with you. Bye-bye.